Well, hello again and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the handle that's sticking out the back of the tripod directly towards me that I've mentioned before that is a complete pain in the backside catching on my shirt pocket. Okay. Now, uh, I looked at one of the old videos today because I couldn't remember how to uh, put a repeater channel in my Bao Feng. And I think I started that one with uh, the wonderful world of amateur radio with uh, VK6CS. Hmm. I don't know quite what happened to that. It sounds it sounds a little more uh, period, doesn't it, for this sort of thing? You know, tube amplifiers, very old school. Welcome to the wonderful world of amateur radio. It does sound a little more old school. Okay. Anyway, enough of the uh, enough of the rambling. Uh, I hope you can hear me over the uh, over the blower. I've got the um, got the GS35 running at the moment with the heater on, uh, the filament running, and the cooling air. Uh, it's been on for, I don't know, about nine hours uh, so far. It's going to be on for another three or four hours, just as part of the burning process. I'll do the same tomorrow. I'll give it about 12 hours tomorrow, because uh, I'm getting fairly close to being a, uh, to putting some HT on the tube. So I just want to make sure the vacuum is, uh, is good, because these tubes are new old stock, and by running the heater, um, it's uh, getting rid of any impurities or air molecules that might have uh, got in there over the uh, over the storage period. Uh, just uh, tweak up the vacuum a bit so that uh, nothing nasty happens when I apply some when I apply some HT. Um, so, just out of uh, just out of interest, uh, here's the uh, here's the meter I bought from Jcar a couple of weeks ago. It's a clamp meter, very useful clamp meter. Um, also does voltage and uh, resistance as well, I believe. The only thing I'm not keen on, uh, keen on with regard to this meter, is this little wheel here. Uh, it's got a sort of thumb action to it. It'd be nice if it was a bit taller and you could actually just turn it with your fingers. But uh, anyway, I'll, uh, let's put it on voltage uh, and select the mode to AC volts. Check the heater voltage. See that? That's uh, that's 12.77 volts. Uh, it's nominally uh, 12.6 volts, plus or minus 0.7. Uh, so that's uh, that's right in the sweet spot. So so well, 12.6 plus or minus 0.7 is uh, what's that? 13.3 and. Um, 11.9, so that's uh, that's right in the sweet spot. Just check the current. And the good thing about the clamp meter is I can just clip it on and uh, look at the current. So just turn this around to whilst avoiding the handle. AC amps. Go. Oh, there we go. As I say, it'd be nice if that was uh, a bit taller. And uh, I'll zero that with the uh, I'll just zero that with the rel button. And then I'll put that on one of my heater wires. And you can see that heater current is 2.81, 2.82 amps. Um, heater current is supposed to be 2.95 amps plus or minus 0.3 amps, so again that's right in the sweet spot, so 2.95 minus 0.3 is 2.65, and plus 0.3 is, uh, I don't know, what's that, 2.3.25, so 2.82 amps is uh, right in the sweet spot, so that looks, uh, that looks nice and happy. Now, uh, I've uh, heard the question asked on a couple of occasions. I'll just uh, just turn this off. Just turn the um, zoom out again and uh, turn my meter off. There we go. That's off. See what I mean? It's a little bit. If you've got sweaty hands like me. You know, it's coming up to Christmas. Might be spending some money. So a lot of perspiration involved. Uh, it can be a little bit awkward turning those uh, turning that knob. 
OK. I've heard the question asked on more than one occasion, can you use an antenna analyzer to look at the input impedance of a grounded grid amplifier? Now, uh, and I've also heard that uh, you can look at the input of a grounded grid amplifier with the heater on, with no HT applied, and you can see the input impedance. So I thought, hmm, can you? Let's find out. So I've got uh, I've got the uh, the trusty old UKITS FG01 antenna analyzer here, connected with a bit of coax into the RF input of the uh, of the PA stage of the amplifier air box. Now remember, in the amplifier air box, so in there is uh, on the other side of that is a 0.01 microfarad capacitor co coupling the RF uh, to the cathode. There's a cathode choke in there for the for the heaters, and uh, this grey box under here contains the uh, the bias uh, arrangement. Now, so the tuning for the input of the amplifier is going to be an L circuit, and that's going to be in a separate little box. So there'll be a short bit of coax going from the PA module into the input tuning module, probably about as far away as this meter is. So very short bit of coax, um, because the uh, um, AC component of the anode current has also got to run through it. So, you know, if you, if you make, if you put the tuner external to the amplifier, you've got a couple of metres of cable going over, you've got the radio, you've got your drive radio and you've got your tuner, or your matching unit, going into your amplifier, and just going uh, with the, um, the, the input of the amplifier not being tuned as such, so you've just got a 0.01 going into the cathode of your, of, your, of your valve, then you've got the AC component of your anode current running all the way through your coax and then back again, so that can cause problems. Anyway, <coughs> I digress. So, let's see what happens. So this is not tuned, that's where I was going with that. So the input of this is not tuned, this is just 0.01 capacitor looking into the cathode of the valve with the heater on. So what happens if we turn on the antenna analyzer? Mm, well, on 40 meters, uh, it looks absolutely abysmal. Impedance is greater than 350 ohms. SWR is greater than nine. Um, I, su I suspect they are the limits on this particular device. So if the SWR is higher than nine and the impedance is higher than 350 ohms, it's not gonna wanna know. OK, well, let's just have a look at uh, 80 metres. That's 3.6 metres. Still greater than 9, still greater than 350 ohms. Try a higher frequency. 10 megs. Oh, it's come down to sort of, sort of, can't make its mind up whether it's 304 ohms or 325 ohms. 20 metres. At least we're getting something on the screen now. <laughs> Impedance 118 ohms and SWR greater than 9. 21 megs, uh, greater than 9, 21 ohms, oh, 21 ohms. This does vary slightly whether the heater's on or not, not much, but uh, it does. Uh, 24, 24.9 megs, is that focusing OK on that? Can't quite see that. 2 ohms, SWR greater than 9, 28 megs, 9 ohms, greater than 9. 52 megs, we're back to 350. I haven't decided yet whether to make this so it will work on 6 metres. Uh, and that's um, 350 ohms, in excess of 350 ohms, in excess of an SWR of 9. Oh, come on, focus, please. It looks a, it's a very small viewfinder on this. I don't know if it's me that's out of focus or the, or the camera. OK, so the answer to the question, can you look at the input of a grounded grid amplifier uh, with an antenna analyzer, with just the heater on, and look at the uh, look at the input impedance. The answer is uh, no, you can't. Um, unless there's something wrong with it, I don't think there is. Uh, but uh, what I'll do is I'll find out when um, uh, I'll put some put some HT on it, adjust the bias, uh, connect it to the tank circuit, tune it into a dummy load, put some drive into it, and um, take it from there. And then uh, I'll use that um, L match. Uh, this L match. 
uh, that I knocked up a little while ago. Remember, I knocked this up because I, I, I want to find out what values of C and L I will need to match my uh, random wire antenna. So this won't be left in circuit, this is just a, a device for uh, finding those values. Um, I'll use this to tune the input to the, um, to the uh, amplifier. And uh, I'll tune it for maximum output into a dummy load. I'll use that L match, and I'll measure the values, and then I'll note for each band what the minimum uh, and maximum inductance and capacitance is uh, that's required to match the input. Um, I'll then get a variable capacitor that has slightly less than the minimum capacitance and slightly more than the maximum capacitance, and uh, I'll wind the coil on this, uh, on this former here so that uh, I have the correct inductances for uh, inductance taps for, uh, for each band. So that's, uh, that's what I've got in mind. And that's, uh, so the amplifier hasn't completely stagnated, you know, it's, it's, uh, something's happening with it. And just out of curiosity, it doesn't quite sound as noisy to me today. Maybe I'm getting cloth-eared. But uh, let's just have a look at the noise it's making. We'll call that 67 dBA. I'll have to have a look at a previous video to see whether uh, uh, to see whether that's louder or not. But uh, it doesn't actually sound as annoyingly loud. And I think once that's installed in the cabinet, um, that noise is going to be attenuated again. So uh, I think that might be quite acceptable. If it isn't, as I've said before, um, because the PA on this is uh, because this is a, a modular type design. I'll be able to take this uh, PA stack out and put another PA in there, uh, maybe with one big glass valve in it or a couple of glass valves, um, and get rid of the fans altogether. Just have uh, you know, just have uh, radiation cooled tubes in there, um, which might um, you know, get rid of that bloody awful noise altogether. I may do that, but um, I'll see how it goes and how it sounds first. The other thing too is that. The GS35B, um, I'll be running it in spec, so I'll be running the uh, the anode voltage at uh, just a bit under 3,000 volts, they say maximum 3,000 volts, and a lot of people really squeak it up. I've seen uh, videos, I think people running 4,000 volts on these and 4,200 volts. They show the output power, they don't show, they don't show what the output envelope looks like though. Um, but uh, anyway, I'll be running it in spec. Now, um, I don't know how efficient it's going to be with the lower anode voltage. So, uh, you know, if I get, um, I don't know, if I get less than a thousand watts out of it, I'll probably, with a hundred watts of drive, I'll probably take that out and put some glass valves in there uh, to tweak the efficiency up a little bit. Um, oh, the other thing was, uh, I think I've shown you this before. Uh, this is just a, uh, a, no a non-contact thermometer. And I got this so that, uh, it's quite good actually, because it's got a, uh, a laser pointer on it. Let's bring it back here. Can you see that? See the dot on the anode there? So what, uh, and it's showing me that that's, can you see that? That anode is uh, at 29 degrees centigrade. So when it, when I've, uh, when I've tuned it up uh, with full power output, that's, that's the hottest, hottest it's going to get when it's being tuned up, uh, when it's running full power output. I'll just uh, put that on there. Put that on the anode like that and uh, read the temperature and just make sure that uh, it doesn't exceed 200 degrees centigrade. Certainly shouldn't because the uh, the airflow through the tube is as specified. It's uh, it's actually a little bit more. So um, there's a little bit more than 90 cubic feet a minute of air going through that tube. So uh, there shouldn't be any problem there. Okay, well I think that's uh, that's about it. Um, Hope you found that interesting, or informative, as usual, or both. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time.